Okay, I almost hate saying this. I don't want to discourage you, but this is probably, out of all the Chapter Zero stuff, it's probably the most difficult uh, section that we'll do. The, um, because uh, some, it depends on your Algebra 1 background. If you had a really strong Algebra 1 background, uh, you definitely would have covered this stuff. But I know there's some classes that probably don't get quite this far. So I can't really start from scratch, but I'm going to try to I'm going to try and make it as easy as I can for you. Oh, uh, hopefully uh, you can see what's going to go on here. Um, tell you what, let me come down here and grab my graph. I forgot to grab the graph. There it is. All right, so we're going to use this thing again, and uh, we're going to find systems of linear equations. Systems, what they're talking about here is they're going to actually have two equations kind of next to each other, and we want to see kind of a relationship between those two equations. Um, again, there's a lot of background information. If I was going to teach this in algebra, you know, as an algebra one topic, I'd probably put some extra stuff in here. Um, I probably won't make this real difficult on a quiz or a test for you. I'll make it as simple as I can since it is a beginning chapter and we haven't really covered much of this. This is kind of one of those deals where they it looks like they kind of expect you to already know this from Algebra 1. But I know how it goes. Not everybody has the same Algebra 1 class. Some go, some go further than others. Anyway, let me stop talking and let's do this. So here's... A couple equations y equals negative x plus 3 and we're gonna have two equations here and then we're gonna graph them both and then we're gonna take a look at them and there's so there's my two equations let's move this a little closer there we go what I'm gonna do let's just go through this very very quickly all right again there's a lot of a lot of stuff I could teach you before this um, but Hopefully you'll remember some of this. Do you remember this? Y equals MX plus B? Yeah, that's pretty familiar. I think in most Algebra 1 classes, if not all of them, you probably at least talk about Y equals MX plus B. Let's review quickly. The M is the slope and the B is the Y-intercept. All right, so if you look at this first one right here, this is the Y-intercept. It's where it crosses the Y-axis. So if I was to graph this, I would start at the origin and go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and put a point right there. Okay, that's the y-intercept. Now, the number, the m, the number that's being multiplied by the x, is your slope. And it doesn't even look like there is a number next to it, but there is. It's a 1. It's a negative 1. If you remember, the slope is rise over run. hope that sounds familiar. Most math teachers uh, use that expression right there. So if I have a negative 1 slope, I'm going to start here at my y-intercept, and I'm going to uh, rise and run to make it a negative 1. So I can rise negative 1, which means I go down 1, and I run positive 1, which means I'm going to go right here. Now if I wanted to, I could have risen a positive 1 and ran a negative 1. Look, it still puts you in the same spot. So what I'm going to do is I am going to draw a line that connects those points. And hopefully this will, yeah, this will work. All right, so there's my line right there. That's this first one. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's just make that yellow, and that'll make it easier to see the difference between the two. Let's graph this one. Same thing. The y-intercept is negative 3, so I'm going to start at the origin, go down 3, 1, 2, 3. So that's 3 on the y, or negative 3 on the y-axis. The slope is 2, or 2 over 1, so it's rise over run. I'm going to rise 2, 1, 2, and run 1, positive. It's right there. If you wanted to, I could do it. Watch. I could... Go 4 over 2 if I wanted to, couldn't I? Because 4 over 2 is the same as 2 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. Look what happens. It still makes that same straight line. So let's connect those points. And you see something, don't you? Do you see something with that green line and that yellow line? They actually cross each other or they intersect. That's a good geometry word. They intersect. These two lines right here, they intersect right here okay now what's cool about this is that point of intersection is actually the solution for this system of equations that x and y is shared by the green line that ordered pair is on the green line and that ordered pair is on the yellow line so that must mean that both lines share that point let's see what that point is it's 2 1 so that red point right there is the ordered pair 2 1 
That means x is equal to 2, or when x is equal to 2, then what, mm, let's say it this way. We'll plug them in, watch. If I put a 2 in for the x, all right, let's do that. Let's use this equation right here. If I plug a 2 in for the x, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, plus 3 is what? It's positive 1. So y equals positive 1. Look at this x over here. What if I, what if I um, put, a x, put a 2 in for this x? So I put this 2 in for this 2, 2 times 2, watch, 2 times 2 minus 3. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 3, oops, minus 3 is what? It's 1. I get the same exact thing, don't I? So this x is a solution, and I'm going to, um, for both of these, this x and y works for both of them. I don't know if I explained that very well, but that is your answer to both of these. If I wanted to solve for x and y, we're going to do that here in a second. Um, if I wanted to solve for x and y without graphing, I could. There's a way to do it. We'll show you that next. Um, but sometimes graphing is really cool because you can see exactly where it intersects. That's the x and that's the y. So if I told you right here, solve by graphing. Okay, if that's what I told you and I gave you these two equations right here, you would graph them both, find out where they intersect, and they intersect at 2, 1. What does that mean? That means x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1. And that would be the solution for both of those. All right, let's look at this one. Same kind of deal, okay? Solve by graphing. Now, it's not really written real great right here. I would really like y to be by itself. It's a lot easier to graph because y equals mx plus b. Remember that? So if I was to graph this thing, I really would like it in this form. It would make things a lot easier for me. So let's take this, y minus 2x equals 6, and let's solve for y. Let's get the y by itself. Um, let's erase that. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy and paste it, and let's just drop it down here and let's work with it here. All right. So if I want to get y by itself, how do I get rid of that minus 2x? I added 2x to both sides. So I'm going to go y equals, that canceled out, but I have to add it 2x to the other side. Now if you notice, the x comes before the b, so I'm going to kind of slide the 2x in front of the 6. So it's going to be 2x plus 6. Okay, that's algebra. I know some of you guys haven't had algebra you know, all summer, obviously. So um, anyway, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Let's do this one right here. I'll copy and paste and put it down here. Let's go a different color with this. Um, uh, let's go this color right here. All right, so now what I'm going to do, this is a little bit more difficult. Um, i got to do a couple steps here. I want to take the 6x and move it over to the right side. That's exactly what we did up here. But that's a 3y. So 3y equals 6x plus 9. Now what I have to do is, let's scooch this down. What I have to do now is get rid of that 3. So I divide both sides by 3. If I divide that by 3, I have to divide everything by 3. So let's see what I get. I get y equals 6 over 3 is 2x plus 9 over 3 is 3. So look what I have right here. Let's, um, let's just move this right here, and let's move this right here. We'll put them right next to each other like that, okay? What we want to do is we want to graph both of these equations, and we want to see where the point of intersection is. Where do those lines intersect? All right, so let's graph this one. y equals 2x plus 6. So the y-intercept is 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The slope is 2, so I rise 2, run 1. Or if you wanted to, I could rise down and run to the left. 1, 2, 1. Look at that. It still lines up, doesn't it? It's always nice. And let's kind of stretch it out a little bit. And we'll stretch this just a tad more. Okay, so there's the blue one. Let's do this yellow orangey color one. The y-intercept on this one is 3, so I'm going to start here and go 3. 1, 2, 3, right there. And look at the slope. Oh, the slope is the same thing, so I already did that once. Watch. 1, 2, 1. All right. If I wanted to do 1, 2, 1 again, I could, right, just to make sure it lines up. And then, hmm, little problem with this, though. Remember what we're trying to do? We're trying to find out where these two lines intersect each other. 
But look at this. They both have the same slope, don't they? If they both have the same slope, guess what? These guys right here will never intersect each other. So how in the world do I find an X and a Y that works for both of these? Well, there's nothing that exists. There is no answer for this. There is no X that I could put in for this, okay, and put in for this, and these two equations uh, would equal each other. There's no X possible, all right? There's just no way. And I can see it graphically because they don't intersect, so there's no value for X and Y. There's no common point that they share. You see that? There's no way. They'll never intersect each other, all right? There's no common point that they share. So you say there's no solution. That's what you would say. No solution. Let's write that down. So there is no solution. All right, that's all you would say for that if they don't intersect. Now notice, I could have saved myself some time by after I did the equations, I could have looked at this and said, oh, the slope of this is two and the slope of this is two. So guess what? They have the same exact slope. That means they're going to be parallel to each other. These are all words we're going to talk about later in the book, but they're going to be parallel to each other and they'll never intersect. So right then and there, I could have said that there was no solution. Okay, we're kind of getting away from the graphing on this one, but um, we're going to solve for X and Y without having to graph it because sometimes it's a little more complicated to graph it and it's kind of a pain. Sometimes it's better to do it algebraically. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this thing called substitution. Again, this is a topic that should have been covered in Algebra 1. Maybe you did it and maybe you just forget or maybe you never did it in the first place. So let's just do it right here. Use substitution. So I'm going to substitute, I'm going to replace something with what it's equal to. If you look at this, y is equal to negative 4x. Let's get rid of that circle right there. I'll put a circle right here. Okay, y is equal to negative 4x. Down here there's a y. So what I'm going to do, this y and this y are the same thing. This x and this x are the same thing. So if y is equal to negative 4x, I could take that negative 4x and guess what? I could put it in for this y right here. I could substitute it, that's substitution. So, And why would I want to do that? Because if I just took this equation the way it's written, I couldn't solve for x and I couldn't solve for y because there's two variables. Up here I could not solve for x and y because there's two variables, two different variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this y and replace it with a negative 4x and let's see what happens. So it's going to be 2, this is times y, so it's times negative 4x. See, that's the same thing as just 2y, isn't it? Because y and negative 4x are the same thing. I just replaced that y with a negative 4x. Let's keep writing the rest of this equation. There's the 2y and then plus 3x equals 8. And now look what I can do. Now I don't have an X and a Y, I have just X's. Now I can solve for the X's. Let's do the math here. 2 times negative 4, this is multiplication, that's negative 8X plus 3X equals 8. Now let's add like terms. Negative 8X plus 3X is negative 5X, and that equals 8. And then I will divide by a negative 5. And my answer is X equals negative 8 fifths. So that's the x part of it. But when it says solve the system of equations, I have to solve for y as well. But look right here. I kind of already know what y is equal to. So I'm going to do another substitution. I'm going to take what I just found for x and I'm going to put it in for that x right there. Does that make sense? It's another substitution because I'm trying to solve for y. So y is equal to negative 4 times x. Now look, since I'm multiplying by a fraction, I'm going to put this over 1. They didn't make these numbers as easy as they could have, but it's not that hard. So y is equal to negative 4 times x. x, I'm going to multiply, x is negative 8 fifths. All right. So now when I multiply across, negative times negative is positive. 4 times 8 is 32. And then you do the bottom, 1 times 5 is 5. That doesn't reduce. See, 5 doesn't go into anything up here, so nothing reduces. And that's what y is. There's x, and there's y. Now, if you were to graph this, would you have ever, even if you did find the point of intersection, would you have ever guessed it's at negative 8 fifths? That's actually 1 and 3 fifths. Negative 1 and 3 fifths, would you have ever guessed that? Probably not. So sometimes doing it algebraically, 
is a lot more accurate and um, you get a you get a much better answer so that's substitution I know that was pretty quick usually if I was going to teach that from scratch I would take a lot longer uh, maybe go through some other things but they kind of expect that you know it already I know that that's not always true but um, hopefully you can um, understand that a little bit if you want to go go to have I even talked about this before probably not the best time but I'm going to show you anyway watch have I talked about Khan Academy www and then Khan Academy and it's org. this is an awesome awesome place now there's it's basically just a guy who does videos very much like this he uses the black screen uses the pens and the colors and talks and stuff that's where I got the idea from doing this all you got to do is go on there and do a search do a search for um, using substitution and you'll see examples and he'll break it down and he'll make it really easy to understand and he talks less than I do anyway so they're usually a little shorter lessons so um, give it a shot all right don't be afraid of that it's a really nice uh, website I mean he's got tons and tons of math on there but look up look up substitution or systems of equations and I'm sure you'll find substitution all right let's do another type and then we'll be finished and it's called elimination okay here's the last one and it's a little tougher I'll warn you okay I don't want to scare you off but it's a little bit tougher than the other ones um, again it'd be really nice if I could take more time to go over this but this is they just give you this example again they kind of expect you to already know how to do this we're gonna do elimination so what we're gonna do is I would love if these two things were exactly the same or not exactly the same if they were the same number what one was positive and one was negative then they would eliminate they would cancel out or I would love if they were the same okay they're not so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make them the same I want to multiply this by something and multiply this by something so that I can get the same number. So what can I multiply 3 by to get a number and multiply 4 by in order to get the same answer? Well, I could probably make it into a 12, couldn't I? I could take 3 and multiply it by a 4 and get a 12. I could take this 4 and multiply it by a 3 and get a 12. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do here, let's just rewrite the problem give myself some more room and then put the 4x right here I hope you've seen this stuff before because it'll make it a little easier for you if you have if not just try to follow along what I want to do is make one positive and one negative I want this to be a, like a positive 12 and this to be a negative 12 how in the world could I do that well I could multiply this thing by a negative 4 actually let's keep that positive the top one multiply that by a 4 now if I multiply the whole entire left side by a 4 I have to multiply the right side by a 4 now remember what we're trying to do we're trying to make these X's into the same number one being positive and one being negative so I multiply this by a positive 4 what can I multiply this by I can multiply that by a negative 3 see this will be a positive 12 this will be a negative 12 and then they'll add up to 0 they'll eliminate they'll go away which is kind of what we're trying to do if I multiply this by a negative 3 I also have to multiply that by a negative 3 so let's see what's gonna happen here alright let's kinda of rewrite this equation with that multiplication let's distribute the 4 through this so this is gonna be a 12x plus 4 times 5 is 20y equals 7 times 4 is 28 let's do the bottom here this is a negative 12x see that was what we're trying to do all along the whole idea of this elimination was to get this to be a 12 and this to get to be a negative 12 and I've accomplished that and you'll see why I want to do that in a second and then if we distribute it through here we get a minus 6y and 0 times anything is 0 all right now watch what happens I'm gonna put a little line right here because this is what we're getting at again if I had more time I'd go through some rules here but basically the rule uh, boils down to this what I can do is I can add up all the columns right if I add up all the columns let's see what happens 12x plus a negative 12x is actually a zero so look what they do they go away or what was the word they eliminate okay they go away so now look what I'm left with I'm only left with Y's and I don't have an X here so now I can solve for Y let's add these up 
20y plus a negative or minus 6y, 20y minus 6y is 14y. And then add those together, 28 plus 0 is 28. Now it's simple, divide both sides by 14 and y is equal to 2. So look at that, I actually found out what y was equal to in this, from this original equation. But we gotta solve for x as well, don't we? Now, since I know what y is, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a substitution, okay? Just like I did in that other problem. I'm gonna take this y equals two and I'm gonna put it in anywhere where you see a y, I can put it in. I can pick this uh, top equation or I can pick the bottom equation. I tell you what, let's pick this bottom equation, this four x plus two y. Now, instead of putting y, what am I gonna put in there? I'm gonna put in a two right because y is 2 equals 0 now look what I can do now I can get x by itself and then I got x and I got y and I'm good to go and I'm done so let's do this that's 4x plus 4 equals 0 subtract 4 from both sides hope your algebra skills are coming back to you 4x equals look that was 0 0 minus 4 is negative 4 divide both sides by 4 and look what you get you get x equals negative 1 and there's your answer. X equals negative one and Y equals two. That is your ordered pair, or that's your, your answer. And a lot of times they write it as an ordered pair, negative one, two. Why do they write it as an ordered pair? They write it as an ordered pair because these are two equations of a line that intersect each other. One goes something like that, one goes like this. Where is the point of intersection? It's at negative one, two. All right, hope that makes some sense. That was a little bit of a tough lesson. Again, go to that khanacademy.org if you um, need some background. Uh, you know, you need somebody to solidify the background that you have in, in algebra. Um, Khan Academy is a great, great place to go to. All right, we'll see you next class. And, um, and you can always ask me questions in class on how to do these. And that, that should help you out a little bit. All right, thanks for listening. Bye.